Welcome to the Liberate Your Life podcast. I'm Melinda Fletcher, your mystic mountain mama and Ayurvedic expert, here to guide you through the intertwining paths of Ayurveda, somatic healing, and spiritual growth. In each episode, we explore the ancient wisdom of Ayurveda, diving into a transformative world of somatic practices and embark on a journey towards spiritual enlightenment. Whether you're a newcomer or a seasoned explorer in these realms, our discussions are designed to illuminate and inspire. Imagine this podcast as your sanctuary, where ancient traditions and modern insights converge. From practical Ayurvedic wisdom to profound somatic healing techniques, we cover it all, helping you integrate these practices into your daily life for holistic well-being. So grab your favorite cup of herbal tea, find a cozy spot, and settle in. Together we'll uncover the secrets to physical health, emotional balance, and spiritual awakening. It's time to liberate your life, embrace your inner wisdom, and awaken to your true potential. Hello, dear listeners, and welcome to another episode of Liberate Your Life podcast. This episode, we dive into the intersection of ancient wisdom and modern living. We explore the profound connection between resilience and Ayurveda, uncovering timeless insights that guide us through challenging times of uncertainty. Stay tuned for this episode, episode 39, Resilience and Ayurveda, Why Ancient Wisdom Holds True Today. Let's begin with understanding resilience. So resilience as defined, is the ability to adapt and bounce back from adversity. So given my Ayurvedic background, perspective, and holistic approach to living, I really like to direct resiliency into a much more holistic understanding. So I feel that the holistic understanding of resilience encompasses the interconnectedness of mind, body, and spirit in facing and overcoming adversity. I think it recognizes that resilience is not just about bouncing back from challenges, but it's also about growing and thriving in the face of them. So holistic resilience acknowledges the profound impact of physical health, emotional well-being, social connections, and spiritual practices on our ability to navigate life's ups and downs. So When we look at resiliency, there's this level of flexibility and resource that I really think comes in to support and really bolster this idea of resiliency. So resiliency in the West has much more of uh, the angle of, uh, of just having this like grit and strength to just handle and make it through all these challenges But there's this holistic approach where resiliency is this capacity to integrate what is happening, to understand it from a level of spiritual depth and human experience that we can then integrate into this incredible way to grow and to thrive. And that really builds this foundation to navigating life. Life is going to have its challenges. We're not reinventing the wheel today. Life has been the spectrum of amazing and horrible and atrocities and death and wars and a lot of pain. Um, And when we cultivate this level of holistic resilience within ourselves, we begin to have this space and flexibility and resource to integrate that which we experience as humans and stay deeper in the seat of our center so that it doesn't rock us at our core and destabilize us. So when we are destabilized, then our whole life suffers, our emotional, physical, mental well-being. It affects our relationships. It affects our physical body's health. It affects our families, right? So when we build this level of holistic resilience, we're able to hold the capacity of life's challenges. And then at that level, we 
remain in the seat of a compassionate love frequency and energy vibration that is ultimately needed to really direct this collective consciousness into the light, into the healing space that we are really praying for in this whole collective world, human species, animal species, life species on this earth as we know it. So holistic resilience is this is this deeper level of alchemical resilience that fosters the capacity to hold space and to grow through adversity and to thrive. And that anchors us into the seat of love and compassion. So from a holistic perspective, resilience involves physical health. A strong and resilient body forms the foundation for overall well-being through exercise, nutrition, sleep, and relaxation techniques. They all play these vital roles in building this physical resilience and supporting our ability to cope with stress. We also have emotional well-being. So emotional resilience involves the capacity to recognize, understand, and manage emotions effectively. This includes cultivating self-awareness, developing healthy coping strategies, and fostering positive emotional connections with others. So again, the social connections is also a part of um, holistic resilience. So human beings are inherently social creatures, we're tribal, and our relationships with others significantly influences our resilience. So strong social support through network, provides a sense of belonging, acceptance, and validation which buffers against the impact of stress and adversity. My favorite spiritual practices. So spiritual resilience involves finding meaning, purpose, and connection to something greater than ourselves, right? So engaging in spiritual practices such as meditation, prayer, mindfulness, and self-reflection can offer solace, guidance, and perspective during difficult times. And then we move on to mind-body connections, so like somatic practices. So holistic resilience recognizes the intricate connection between the mind and body. And these practices that promote mind-body harmony, such as yoga, tai chi, breath work, qigong, can help regulate stress responses, promote relaxation, and enhance overall resilience. So in essence, holistic resilience emphasizes the importance of addressing the physical, emotional, social, and spiritual dimensions of well-being to cultivate a robust capacity for adaptation, growth, and thriving in the face of life's challenges. So I really love this idea of holistic resilience, alchemical resilience, and it's not just this ability to bounce back, but to build and expand in our capacity to be flexible. And then this deeper dimension around having this perspective and understanding of life. So it's, we're going in more to the non-dualistic. So there's the dualistic. So there's life and death and there's hot and cold. And there are these qualities, which in Ayurveda are these opposite qualities, right? And so life holds the container for it all. None of us are getting coming into this life without being born and none of us are getting through this life without dying at some point. That's like part of that cycle. So when we can hold this container in this expansive awareness of life's challenges and life's beauty and that we on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, that we really integrate these holistic perspectives and approaches to remaining resilient, adaptable, flexible, and resource. So how do we live each day? How do we cultivate this inner guidance and inner awareness and inner space to feel and move through life without getting rocked at our core that destabilizes us, that puts us into fight or flight, that creates dysregulated nervous system that then affects every single body system and then starts to spill over and aggravate and it can metamorphose into something greater and bigger that is much more challenging to back ourselves out of, right? So 
every day, the practices that we are doing, every week, the social engagements, the practices that we are connecting into to really facilitate and support this inner container, this inner awareness for this strength and adaptability. So let's get into some of those practices now. So here are some tips for cultivating holistic resilience, right? So prioritizing self-care. I always go back to self-care. Self-care equals self-love. Self-care is taking intentional time to honor yourself, to care for yourself, to do the things that you know will make you feel better. We're great at taking care of other people. We're great at showing up and doing all these things, but taking the time daily time for self-care is super ultra important. So take time for activities that nourish your body, your mind, and your spirit, such as exercise, meditation, journaling, and spending time in nature. So spending time in nature is this natural way to harmonize the, the nervous system. It connects you into the bigger ah, ah of life, the like seeing the extraordinary in the ordinary to connect into the cycles, to breathe the fresh air, to feel the sunshine, to feel the earth, to see the animals, to see the blossoms, to see the cycles of life. So connecting with nature is super big. Um, fostering social connections, right? So leaning into friends, family, and community for support during difficult times. Cultivate meaningful relationships that uplift and inspire you. So who are you surrounding yourself with? And are you surrounding yourself with people that really raise that vibration and really support a positive attitude? Or are you surrounding yourself with people that have a more negative um, outlook on life and aren't caring for themselves? So then it's it's easier to gravitate towards um, or to, to feel inspired by people that are in a positive light versus gravitating towards kind of that negative people that aren't caring for themselves. Um, then that can really build and, and really aggravate that, um, that challenging place that you're feeling inside yourself. So positive relationships, leaning into networks, finding a therapist, calling a good friend, going for a walk with a good friend, really creating that social network to support you during challenging times, right? So, and then another one is practicing mindfulness. So stay present and focused and cultivate awareness of your thoughts, emotions, and sensations, right? So mindfulness practices, they they help to deepen our own awareness of what is going on, what our thoughts are, how they're influencing us, and then creating the field of awareness so we can stay in witness of those thoughts instead of becoming those aggravated or those really challenging thoughts, right? So breathing through them, through breathing, breathing, uh, Breathing techniques, breath techniques, body scans can really help you stay grounded, right? So they help you stay grounded, connecting to the breath, and um, so practicing mindfulness. Embracing spiritual practices, so is another way to cultivate holistic resilience. So explore practices that nurture your spiritual well-being, such as prayer, meditation, or spending time in reflection. Connect with a sense of purpose and meaning beyond yourself. So I love my days of silent meditation, whether it's 15 minutes, whether it's an hour or whether it's a day retreat or a five day retreat. I have gained such incredible depth and peace and harmony and really falling in love with that quiet space that, um, wasn't always as inviting it used to overwhelm me to slow down because what was in there I was so afraid of what was in there and then once I fell in love with meditation and stillness I fell in love with that sweet sweet inner peace and still quality that then has become like this guiding guiding um river that I um that I'm always always nourished through so um, yeah, embracing spiritual practices and then cultivating gratitude. So when we focus on the negativity, the negativity grows, right? So our thoughts become our words, our words become our actions and our actions become our habits and our habits become our reality, right? So, uh, really taking the time to be aware of our thoughts, 
uh, through these spiritual and uh, mindfulness practices and then how that directly influences our words and our stories that we tell ourselves. And so when we focus on the blessings of life and the goodness, um, we can cultivate gratitude for small joys and moments of beauty. And really gratitude can shift your perspective and help you find resilience in challenging times. And always remember you're stronger than you know. And the strong is not about bridging over and just gritting your way through it. Um, it's about expanding your capacity of love, compassion, understanding, awareness through holistic resilience. And again, I'm going to circle back to the resilience, flexibility, and resource. So this idea of resource is when we feel resourced, and again, this is by these daily practices that we just went over. So when we cultivate the self-care practices, when we do the mindfulness practices and the gratitude and the social networking, we're creating these resources in our reservoir to move through life. This absolutely is foundational to healing, to healing trauma, to healing stress and overwhelm. If we are not resourced, then we are kicked into fight or flight. We are in survival mode because we feel like it is us alone and that we're not resourced. We're not being able to resource from the earth. So when we do these daily practices, we create this resiliency. We expand into this capacity to hold space for challenging times. This is absolutely important right now. I definitely feel like since the onset of COVID that there's been this, this deeper shift and people feeling really challenged. Um, if it was small, then it's gotten really aggravated since then. And it's just been piling up and piling up as we look to places in the world and things that are going on. However, at the same time, uh, life has been all of these atrocities and all of these beauties throughout time. Um, and so it will continue to be that way. We will continue to face hard times. We will continue to be uh, in the beauty of light and love. So again, what is our relationship to it? What is our relationship with ourself? What is our relationship to our community and our family? How do we advocate and act on a daily basis of our routine and our practices and our social interactions to create a beautiful, robust resource and reservoir to really support us in challenging times. We are not meant to do this alone. I know we feel very isolated uh, through technology, through our individual houses, through um, we're not living together in deep community with families and grandma and grandpa across the street or in the same home. We have now uh, been conditioned that we have to go make it out on our own. We have to be successful and show that we can do it in our isolated little pillars. And this is not the case. We are not meant to do this alone. We are tribal. We are meant to um be able to be held in community, in family, in relationship. Um, we can be vulnerable and intimate and expose the places that are challenging and really lean into ourselves, lean into spirit, lean into source and presence, lean into community, find your resources, build the resilience, build the capacity, build that container that you can be felt held in and that you are loved and that you are everything. And from that place, we will continue to move forward and do the work to heal the collective consciousness on this earth and really shift into who and what we truly are in our highest form of love, compassion, and hold deep gratitude for this miracle of life. In this last segment, I want to speak to resilience and Ayurveda and why this ancient wisdom holds true today. So here's why the ancient wisdom of Ayurveda holds true. So in this modern context, Ayurveda has a holistic approach to health. So Ayurveda views health as a dynamic balance between mind, body, and spirit. 
It emphasizes the interconnectedness of all aspects of life and recognizes that resilience is not just about physical strength, but also mental and emotional well-being. By addressing the root causes of imbalances and promoting harmony within the body, Ayurveda supports the development of resilience on multiple levels. So these multiple levels are due because Ayurveda is about individualized and personalized care, somebody's unique constitution. So one of the key principles of Ayurveda is understanding each person's unique mind-body type, known as their dosha, right? So by recognizing that we all have different needs and vulnerabilities, Ayurveda provides personalized recommendations for diet, lifestyle, and care, self-care practices to support resilience. This individualized approach honors the diversity of human experiences and empowers individuals to take ownership of their health and well-being. Next, Ayurveda is amazing with stress management. This is what I speak to a lot with creating sattva within these practices. So Ayurveda offers a comprehensive toolkit for managing stress and building resilience. Practices such as yoga, meditation, pranayama, breath work, and mindfulness are integral parts of Ayurvedic living. These practices help calm the nervous system, reduce stress hormones, and cultivate a sense of inner peace and equanimity, essential qualities for resilience in the face of challenges. Another pillar of Ayurveda is the emphasis on prevention, right? So Ayurveda places a strong emphasis on prevention medicine, advocating for lifestyle practices that promote health and vitality. By adopting a proactive approach to well-being, individuals can strengthen their resilience and reduce the risk of illness and burnout. Simple daily rituals such as eating nourishing foods, getting adequate sleep, and um, engaging in self-care activities form the foundation of Ayurvedic living and contribute to long-term resilience. And then Ayurveda is a time-tested wisdom. Ayurveda has been around for thousands and thousands of years um, with roots dating back like 5,000 years at this point. So its principles and practices have been passed down through generations, refined and validated by centuries of observation and experience. In today's rapidly changing world, the timeless wisdom of Ayurveda offers a grounding presence and a source of stability amid uncertainty, reminding us of the inherent resilience of the human spirit. So incorporating Ayurvedic principles into our daily lives can enhance our capacity to navigate challenges with grace and fortitude, fostering a deeper sense of resilience and well-being. As we embrace the wisdom of Ayurveda, we connect with the timeless truths that have guided humanity for millennia, empowering us to thrive in body, mind, and spirit. Thank you so much for tuning in to Liberate Your Life podcast in this episode, Resilience and Ayurveda. So as we conclude today's episode, remember that resilience is not about avoiding challenges, but about facing them with strength, flexibility, and inner wisdom. By integrating the timeless wisdom of Ayurveda into our lives, we can cultivate resilience, navigate uncertainty, and embrace the duties of life with non-dual awareness. Thank you for tuning in to Liberate Your Life podcast. Be sure to subscribe for more episodes exploring ancient wisdom and modern living. Until next time, may you find strength, peace, and resilience on your journey. I'm Melinda Fletcher, your host. You can connect with me on Instagram at Sattva Wellness Center. Sattva is spelled S-A-T-T-V-A. Or head over to my website, sattvawellnesscenter.com and get your free download for Ayurvedic morning rituals. This is an amazing guide that can really support your morning practice to facilitate that inner wisdom and inner peace as you move out into the world. Until next time, enjoy your day and may peace be with you.